DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is. The one, the only... Wait, you never start a sentence with <laughs> Ann. <laughs> well, I Unless you're in jail, that's the only sentence you start with Ann. Really? You talk that way normally? I mean, you go over to somebody and say, uh, And how are you today? <laughs> yes? Don't you like the people who come up to you and say, I bet you don't remember me yet. No, I don't. Some woman said that to me yesterday. I says, no. She says, you grout your marks, aren't you? I says, yes. She says, are you sure you grout your marks? I says, yes, I'm grout your marks. She says, my, you look just like a man. Here he is. I struck her and we separated. She was an elderly woman. Well, about, about 20. <laughs> oh, here he is, the one, the oh. only. <laughs> From Buck Five to us, Han, see and forget. Well, here I'm again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to three dollars. No. <laughs> right. No, no. Win up to how much? Oh, ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. And if any of them say the secret way, we'll throw them out of the joint. Huh? <laughs> no, they get an extra hundred dollars. Right. Is that right? Okay. And this is the word right here. And you're right. Yes. Who you got on the agenda there? Uh, Groucho, Miss Kathleen Quaylen is waiting to talk to you, and her partner is a very special guest, Mr. Crash Corrigan. Oh. So, folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome to your bet your life. Say the secret word. <laughs> Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. Uh, Crash, it's, it's nice to meet you. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, you're a famous Shakespearean actor, aren't you, Crash? <laughs> Didn't I see you a couple of years ago in King Lear? No, sir. I'm a cowboy actor, and I make Western pictures. Oh. Well, where'd you get the name Crash? Was your father a stockbroker? <laughs> or were you born on the freeway? <laughs> uh, no, Groucho, I... Uh, you like him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Groucho, I was uh, making action pictures, and, of course, I did some football playing, and the way I used to tackle somebody, or f instead of fighting with them with my fist, I used to just take off and dive at them head first, and I acquired the name Crash. Well, I'm glad they don't name all actors by the way they fight. Otherwise, today, I'd be known as kick him in the shins and run like the devil marks. <laughs> You're a pretty big guy, Crash. What is your gross tonnage? Tonnage? Yes, I mean, what do you displace in the water? Oh, I'm six foot and two and a half inches tall, and I weigh 230 pounds. Well, that's enough blubber for one man, I think. <laughs> You're Kathleen Quaylen, huh? That's right. That's a fine Irish name now, isn't it? Now, are you originally from Ireland? Oh, my last name is Norwegian, Groucho, and I'm from Marshall. Quaylen is a Norwegian name? It was Kavallan in the old country. Oh. Mm -hmm. Are you married, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kavallan? Miss Quaylen. Miss Quaylen? No, I'm not, Groucho. And I assume you're interested in matrimony? Yes. Do you have any special qualities that you're looking for in a husband? Uh, I mean, a husband? <laughs> I would like him to be um, intelligent. No. I would like him to have a sense of humor and have his feet on the ground. And, of course, I'd like him to be single. That's a secondary consideration, though. Do you have a job, Kathy? Kathy? Yes, Ms. I Quaylen, do. Ms. Quaylen, Ms. Cavallan? Yes, I'm a stewardess with American Airlines. You're a steward with the American Airlines? No, I'm a stewardess. Uh, oh, I don't hear very well. My glasses need fixing. You have to <laughs> How long have you been in this racket, Kathy? A um, little over six years. Uh, six years? Why, well, you don't look that old. Uh, how do the new jet uh, airliners compare with the prop jobs? Oh, there's no comparison, Groucho. The mm. jets are so much faster, and uh, you don't feel the vibration in the jets, and you don't feel fatigue in flying. And... How do you like working on a jet? I don't know, Groucho. I haven't been on one yet. <laughs> well, I'd like to talk to someone who speaks with authority. But... <laughs> Well, I prefer the old propeller planes. The stewardesses uh, look better when there's a little vibration in it. <laughs> how fast are these stewardesses go? No, how fast do these planes go? About 600 miles an hour. 
What good does it do to go that fast? I mean, what is the point of it? Well, you get there in half the time, and you have more time to do other things. For like instance, what, for example? Well, you could leave New York in the morning and have time to play 18 holes of golf in Los Angeles. You mean all the people that get on in New York come here to play 18 holes of golf? <laughs> no. Suppose it's raining when you arrive in L.A. Do you still have to go out and play golf? No, you don't have to go out and play golf. You it's could... not obligatory? No, it isn't. You could play <laughs> tennis. Well, will they allow you? What's that? Play tennis or go to the office. And... You'll never get married on those jets. There isn't time. That's why I haven't flown on you. Oh. Why don't you go by mule train? That would give you even more opportunity. <laughs> what about you? Are you married, Crash? Yes, sir. I'm married to an actress, Miss Elaine DuPont. She uh, oh, plays, so? plays the part of Sandy in the Ozzie and Harriet Nelson uh, television series. And it's the part uh, opposite Ricky Nelson. Oh. You say she's Sandy? Why Is she a beachcomber? <laughs> no. She's... Well, why is she Sandy? Well, I don't know. Her uh, name is Sandy in the series. You're going to stick to that yeah. cock and bull yeah. story, huh? Well, what is she uh, like, uh, this girl? Well, she's one... I don't mean what she likes. I mean, what is she like? Well, she's very beautiful, and she's, she's won 45 beauty contests. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, she isn't a very good cook. <laughs> don't complain. How would you like it if she'd won 44 cooking contests and looked like you? <laughs> Didn't you make a lot of Western movies? Seems to me I've seen you around one o'clock in the morning on the movie. Yes, Groucho, I've made, uh, let's see, 67 Western pictures mm -hmm. and uh, the Three Musketeer Westerns and uh, the Range You Busters. must have worked for Sal Siegel, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Sal Siegel was my producer on the Th Musketeers, yes, and my partner in eight of these pictures was John Wayne. He played the part of Stoney. I was Tucson in the city. I remember him. I, re I fought Wayne one time, yeah. you know. It was in Indiana where I fought Wayne. Uh, <laughs> you could break the heavies of the villains with your bare hands if, if you had to, couldn't you? Huh? Well, uh, yes, Groucho, I could do that in pictures, but in real life, uh, <laughs> I'm sort of a sissy. I'll let you in on a little secret. I... Uh, I believe even a little feller like you could take me. <laughs> you, you really think so? Yeah, kind of think so. You cross your heart and hope to die? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I think you could, yeah, I'm sure. And uh, you don't hit very hard? Well, no, I'm a pretty good jolly guy. I hardly ever hit anybody unless I'm in a picture. <laughs> You wouldn't uh, want to step outside and say that, would you? With you? Yes, with me. Well, I sure would. And I'll show you how I can even make you look good. Miss Kathy, you're such a wise guy. You just come out of here. Let me see the color of you. Now, put up your jokes, big boy. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Anybody else out there would like a crack at me? Any woman, I mean. Just come up here. <laughs> Fool around with me. Dempsey sees this show. I want him to know what he'd be up against. Well, you're an unusual couple, and I've enjoyed this experience tonight. But I'm sure you'd like to win some money, so what do you say we play You Bet Your Life? Would you like that? Now, you selected World Geography. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Now, what Canadian province lies directly north of the state of Washington? British Columbia. British Columbia is right. That's right. You have one right. What is the name of the mountain range separating France and Spain? Granada? Well, uh, no, it's the Pyrenees. P-Y-R-E-N-E-E-S. You now have one wrong. If you get the next one wrong, the game is over for you. In what country will you find the Volga River? Hey, 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 hey. You now have one hey, right. Hey, hey, hey. I wish you wouldn't talk and I'm singing. <laughs> In what country do the Bahama Islands belong? To what country do the Bahama Islands belong? Cuba. Oh, no. That whole string of islands there belongs to Great Britain. Absolutely. Well, you have one wrong again. 
I should have hit him harder. I would have woke up his mind. Uh, <laughs> what is the name of the observatory whose mean solar time serves as a basis for standard time throughout the world? Would you repeat the question? I doubt it, but I will. What is the name of the observatory whose mean solar time, whose solar time serves as a basis for standard time throughout the world? It's in England. I thought it was in Connecticut. <laughs> Shows you what I know. Well, I'm sorry. I've given you three cracks at this, little one. And as much as I love you, uh, we can't go any further with this. It's the Greenwich or Greenwich Observatory. And you got two in a row wrong, so the game is over for you. I'm sorry you missed two in a row, so you threw. Huh? We don't want you to go away empty-handed, so I'm going to ask you one question for a hundred dollars. What insect is flea-brained? <laughs> the flea. The flea? I thought you were going to say somebody in this show. <laughs> well, that's close enough. Any, uh, sorry you didn't win more, but thanks for being Thank on you, the Jack. show. And I'll take another sock at you when the show is over. Groucho, Joanna Lee, and uh, Dick Matheson are waiting to talk to you. So, folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you see every day. Christy Matheson, eh? Joanna? Yes. Let's get right down to basic uh, questions. Uh, are you married? No, I'm not. No. no. Well, that, we're off to a good start. <laughs> are you thinking of marriage? Well, I've been thinking about it, but nothing's happened. What did you want to happen? <laughs> well, the right thing hasn't happened. I don't believe in rushing into marriage. And I think that I don't believe in early marriages. And I think that... You don't uh, want to have an early marriage. You can get married at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that a woman should be a woman before she's married. Well, you... you, you yeah, well... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you believe a woman should be a woman before she gets married. I certainly agree with that. <laughs> I'd hate to marry a woman and then discover she was really a crocodile. <laughs> Although a lot of my friends have married crocodiles. <laughs> when is a woman a woman? That's oh. kind of silly, isn't it? That's when like saying, uh, well, when me... is a door not a door? When is a jaw? <laughs> you well, like that? Yes, I do. And yeah. Why do you, you like give that? Me, you give me kind of a thought. You I give think... me many thoughts. <laughs> I think so when is a woman a woman? I think Round a midnight, woman... I, guess. I, th I think a woman is a woman when she enjoys being a woman, when she's kind of aware of her femininity. I'm not sure I follow you completely, but I, I'm certainly willing to. <laughs> as soon as the show is over. <laughs> Why don't you leave? I like it. You like him? Yes. I thought you liked me. Oh, I do, but I like him, too. Oh, your taste is Catholic. You like all of them. <laughs> Not all. Would you vote for him for president? Are you running? <laughs> if he doesn't be running, it'll be after you. <laughs> and I'll be along there, too. Your name is Christy Matheson, you said? Dick Matheson. Uh -huh. Where are you from? Uh, uh, Boise, Dick? Idaho. Uh, you have boys in Idaho? How boys many? Boys. Well, they had a number. What sort of work do you do? Well, I'm the religion editor at the Los Angeles Times. Bye now. <laughs> the biggest editor, huh? Now, what do you do in your job? Oh, I uh, listen to sermons and interview clergymen, visiting religious figures that come through town, go to church four or five times on Sunday. Do you take anything out of that plate? Uh... No, but I don't put anything in. Oh. <laughs> well, you come out even on the day. Huh? <laughs> Joanna, let's get back to you for a moment, huh? right. or even longer. Huh? All right. You know, you have a lot of uh, assurance for a young woman in her 20s. Have you ever had any theatrical experience? Well, yes, I am an actress. Oh, Stanislavski? Oh, Stanislavski, Boleslavski, Chekhov, you name oh, it. Oh, you mean it. life is just a Boleslavski? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You've mm -hmm. been in movies? Yes, um, I've done a great deal of television, and uh, lately I've done a couple of science fiction pictures. Oh, really? And, uh, I've been kind of lucky lately in working, but in my spare time, uh, I do write greeting card verses. I work for a greeting card company. Oh, you do, eh? Mm -hmm. You're going for the intellectual life. <laughs> what do you think of it? I think it sounds fine so far. <laughs> 
Uh, and we, would you be willing to remain away from church one Sunday? I mean, <laughs> if the opportunity presented itself. We could write great poetry together. Yeah. Yes, we could, yes. Now, Dick, have you ever tried writing anything else besides your newspaper copy? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I uh, have a new book out. It's oh, The Eternal Search. You have a book out? Yes. Uh, the Eternal Search? What is this, about a fellow who's looking for his car keys? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a history of medicines and drugs. And oh, well, that sounds very interesting. Love potions, voodoo, oh. old uh -huh. wives' tales, this sort of thing. Well, could you give us a... Love potions, you said? <laughs> Don't you regard this as a love potion? What do you yeah. think is a love potion? Well, you know, it's a thing that makes a guy go for a girl or a gr girl go for a guy. Well, do you guarantee these love potions? Well, uh, I understand they work sometimes. Ooh. Well, could, just in case, could you put me down for 50 gallons? <laughs> <laughs> I need all the ammunition I can get. <laughs> Well, it's been an educational experience talking to you two, particularly you. <laughs> now, let's see if you've got strong enough voodoo to win some money here tonight, huh? Now, you have selected as your uh, category folk tunes and old-time favorites. Now, the orchestra's going to play these tunes. You tell me the name. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Are you ready? <laughs> goes the weasel. <laughs> no, they've changed it. It's father goes the weasel. Oh. <laughs> People don't say pop anymore. You have one right. Identify this one. Turkey in the straw. Turkey in the straw, yes. You I never have... did get that turkey out of there. <laughs> yeah. You now have two rights. How about this old folk song? Uh, music, please. <laughs> Get along, little doggy, get along. No, I'm sorry. It's the old Chisholm Trail. One wrong now. Don't get the next one wrong or the game is over. Don't threaten them. <laughs> I'm just telling them. Uh, now tell them uh, in a more dainty manner. Huh? Tell them more cordially. Go on. Uh, unfortunately, you, uh, you goofed here. <laughs> George, go back to the place where you did it. <laughs> Don't get the next one. This is his idea of class. Unfortunately, you goofed him. <laughs> Give me the name of this one. Clementine. Clementine is right. You now have one right. Now, this one tells a story. You tell me the name of it. Frankie and Johnny. Frankie and Johnny, yeah. You don't have two. What right. were they? Lovers. That's right. <laughs> How about this one? Play, Meekin. What'd you say? Little brown jug. A little brown jug. Yeah. You now have three right. Get the next one right, and you'll have $1,000. Now, this one goes back more than 100 years. You tell me the name of it. Girl. Buffalo Which gal, but we'll pay you anyhow. Now you've won a thousand dollars. What would your wife say if you came home with with her? Uh, She'd give you some cash. It'd be cash? interesting to find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, perhaps we can experiment. Right? You won a thousand dollars. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at five or even ten thousand dollars. So go over there and sit down on his lap and think about it. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. That means that our second couple can try for the double chance at five or ten thousand dollars tonight. Hey, you want... <laughs> Here I go again. I'd forgotten her, you know. <laughs> now you've won a thousand dollars so far. If you decide to try for the big money and you fail, you wind up with a total of five hundred dollars. Now, what do you propose to do? We're going. We're You're going? going? We're going for the big money. Okay, you know, you get to pick two numbers. Go ahead. Pick the first number for ten thousand dollars. You my, pick one. My lucky number is seven. Seven. Okay. 
And you pick a number for five. I'm going to try nine again. You're going to try nine again. Huh? That's 16 altogether. <laughs> Luckily, we have no 16 on the wheel. <laughs> now, you know, if either number comes up, you know the rules. Huh? And you know you split the money. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if neither number comes up, the question is worth $2,000. Fair? Here we go. Oh, turn the wheel. That you never say. This question is why $2,000. One of the most colorful and successful of present-day novelists is the 23-year-old author of Bonjour, Tristesse. For $2,000, what is the name of this controversial French girl? Francois Sagan. Francois Sagan. Wait a minute, we've got our music. We're paying a fortune for that. But I know it. <laughs> The answer? Francois Sagan. Francois Sagan is right, so you've each won a thousand dollars. Come back here. You're not, you don't tell me that you're going to uh, church five times next Sunday. Four. Four, huh? He's going to skip once. <laughs> well, congratulations and thanks for being oh, on thank the show. You, eh? you too. Sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio.